got y'all way too far back. There we go. Step into the bad side. Woo, woo, woo. Gonna take me right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Step into the bad side. Step into the bad side. It's like I'm just playing. Welcome to the Let Me Stretch You Out Show, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, comedian Boogie B, the New Orleans representative, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, a.k.a. Mr. Come Here, Let Me Stretch You Out. Yeah, 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 hold on, I gotta see what's going on, hold on. Let's see, we run that one back, boom. Okay, bet. Vice President is in here. Let me see who cop popped in first with that is in my eyes. Danielle with the D, you came in. Pretty early, Danielle with the D. You must have set your alarm on your phone. What's happening, uh, Sippy Dippy Dukes, baby? What's up, Lawanda Woods Griffin? I know you ain't never tripping. You will always be right behind or right first on something. You be right in there, the first person to get a comment through. Sh Shawana Shanks, what's happening, beautiful? Beautiful young lady. What's happening, uh, Danielle with a D from the UK? What's happening, Kenyatta Carter? What's up, baby girl? What's happening? Kenyatta. I say Kenyatta. What's up, Lord Dale? Lord Dale got the whole Louisiana uh, down south name. What's up, Vance? Jennifer, have you seen? I haven't seen this show this, on, on a year. I haven't seen, seen this show on a year. Man, Jennifer, you're not new in the chat, baby. I guess if you saw me before, then you ain't new in the chat. These are my boogets. These are upstanding women of substance and noteworthy vagina, and they indicate themselves with the little red roses that you see in the comments. Since you haven't been here in a while, let me catch you up, baby. Rashonda Mari, I'm glad you, Larry, I'm glad you here, Rashonda. You know why? Because I wanted to give you your just do today. I wanted to give you your proper. Because guess what? Ever since your name been Rashonda Lowry, people been judging you. And I and you pushed through regardless, whether they discriminated against you or not. Because they knew you was black when they saw your damn name was Rashonda Lowry. They called your name expecting a Negro to come up. Because your name is chosen from two black parents. And they picked it from way at the top of Mount Negroes. Have you ever heard of Mount Negroes, where you can see Negroes grow? Have you ever heard of that? It's somewhere in a, it's a, it's a mountainous region where you can see Negroes grow, and that's where Rashawn Delari name got picked from. And white people was judging us as soon as they, uh, looking for Rashonda, Rashonda Lowry, looking for a black girl here, she's a sister, definitely has two black parents. Rashonda? Come on up. Come on up, Rashonda. No, you're here. You got the trophy for two black parent name of the day. T two BPA. Two black parent. Two BPN. Two black parent name. Trophy goes to none other than goddamn Rashonda Lowry. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you vacationed that mountain Negro since Rashonda because that's your place. That's where you're supposed to be. We amongst family when we go up to mountain Negro. Because sometimes, that's what, see, when we don't like to tell other people about it, but sometimes you got to let them know it's a real thing. They just don't know where it is. The, so the two black parent name of the day trophy, which um, in which no, no white person had had any input on naming you Rashonda or, or Larry. Rashonda Larry, that came from two African American descent parents, and I love you for it. Uplift her and thank you for accepting your trophies so gracefully. Thank you for accepting this. This is a prestigious award. Monica Desiree, what's up, baby? This is the meet and greet portion of the Let Me Stress You Out show, where I let y'all know who in the chat with you. I let you know and let you uplift. I let you, I recognize everybody who come in here and say anything in the comments. Lex Shay Renee, I'm glad you're here, baby. Yeah, we was looking for Rashonda to come join our damn fold. Thank you, Lex Shay Renee, for welcoming Rashonda. You got to come back now every day. This is the Let Me share, Stress You Out show. I'm here five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 4 p.m. 
Central Standard Time and, and 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern or ES Eastern Standard Time. So bet. Y'all know where I'm at. You need to come here every day if you want to join the fold. I need a friend named Rashonda. Who else am I asking who I should slap? Rashonda will tell you exactly who you should slap the fuck out of. Oh, every chick I ever met named Rashonda will tell you a story. And after you tell her a story about somebody who did wrong to you, she'll say, okay, now let me tell you who to slap the fuck out of. You need to slap the fuck out of that damn baby mama of his. Because if she gonna man be woman enough to call your goddamn phone, then you gonna be woman enough to slap the fuck out of her when you see her. Okay? Now that's what Rashonda will tell you. She'll burn out who needs the, the shit slapped out of them. Now you know you need to... Now Rashonda, you tell me you ain't never said this. Now you know you... Now you know they need to slap the shit out of him because he ain't... You remember when you said that? Come on, Rashonda. Don't act like you never said... Don't you dare sit up. Put a hundred in the chat when I'm speaking all facts. If you know a girl named Rashonda, who ever said this? Now you know what? Now you know who should, you know who should be slapped in their mouth? That goddamn Donald Trump. You know somebody should slap the shit out of Donald Trump. Rashonda, you done said that before. I know you. I don't know you specifically, but I know Rashondas, and I know what they do. Come on now. I'm from an all-black community in New Orleans. I'm... I'm from an all-black city, an 80% African-American city. You know I haven't been around a few Rashantas, so no better. Look at Renee said 100 in the chat because she know a Rashanta. Miss Nett said 10 hundreds in the chat because she know a Rashanta. Everybody who know a Rashanta and Rashanta, Larry know I'm telling the truth about her. Come on, now I'm just introducing y'all to her. Thank you for coming to Alicia Red, baby. Tiffy Nippy, I see you got your top get badge on. Some of y'all do got Rashonda traits. Even look at Rashonda Lowry put the hundreds in the chat because I'm speaking all facts. She know I know people. That's what I do. Comedians, we don't we don't do we don't study jokes. We study human behavior. We study y'all. We watch us. We watch ourselves and our own flaws. Come on, uh, Chanel Harrison. You know what I'm talking about. We speak from the from the perspective of from which you grew up. Star Skies, you done came in with the hundreds in the chat too? Well, shit, Star Skies. Who else got a name I can burn out real fast? What's happening? Um, oh, 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 you know what I need you to do for me, um, Rashonda? I need you to share the live. Because this show, Chanel, share the live. You know how you press share at the bottom? Of your screen, you ever saw that? That button that's right there? Why are you sitting there looking at me? Share that damn thing like this right here. And you press that share, and then you press the little square where it says post. And then you hit post right there so the live is posted on your page. So whoever comes stop by your timeline will see what you up to right now. They'll see what you in the comments talking about. They'll see why Boogie B is giving Rashonda the two black fairy name of the day award. And I think I'm gonna give the back-to-back -back champion name of for the for my home girl Lordell. Lordell done started coming through. Lordell, daddy name was Lordell. That's a old and her daddy was from Louisiana. And you got damn right he was. With a name like Lordell, you got the southern name of the day. I don't want to call it the country name of the day, because people don't know what country means sometimes. So I'm gonna call it the southern name. Of the day, Lord Dale. Share the live, Lord Dale, because this show gonna be about you, baby. Day we uplifting you today, Lloyd Lloyd Dale. It's, that's how she's she's saying like Lloyd Dale, but it's 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 Lord Dale. Lord Dale is what it smell like. I don't give a damn what nobody say. Look at Rashawn the Lowry said, I'm five two and will swing on anybody. I need you to come in to the Let Me Stress You Out show. Because we talk about people who deserve to be talked about, and that's what you like to do. Uh, Rashonda, you don't like to put hands on people, but you will if you got to. If they back you into a corner, you're going to fight your little vibe two way out of it. And Lord Dale, thank you for, thank you, thank you for, you say your name is Lord Dale. You damn right your name, Lord Dale. Lord Dale, you, thank you for accepting your southern name of the day trophy so gracefully. Because I got another award I like to call the non-American name. And I like to get that one out too. Oh, look at Nicole done came in here. Nicole, stay fresh, Larry. What's happening? 
Yeah, oh, you must be kidding the Rashonda Lowry. Who we know who don't fuck around. Anybody named Rashonda don't fuck around. First off, either they got a big old booty or some big chicken. Every time I'm at the DMV and I hear them call Rashonda name, I be like, oh, shit. Rashonda about to have some ass. Watch. Soon as they come to the window, they be like, Rashonda, can I have Rashonda Lowry? Rashonda Lowry, is there a Rashonda Lowry here? It's good. We're looking for a black lady, probably a sister. She definitely has two black parents. Her name is Rashonda. And as soon as they say that, I stand up like, ooh, Rashonda, sound like you got a big old boot or some big titty. It, that's, for, that's for damn show. Sure. I be like, oh, shit. Let me stand up and see who Rashonda is right fast. She watch me in here getting his license. Hey, you, hey, you, what you in, little old Nahunta? Nahunta, Georgia? Nahunta, Georgia? You got damn right, y'all from Nahunta, Nahunta, Georgia. I never even heard of no damn Nahunta, Georgia. Thank you for coming, uh, Nicole. You, you're obligated to come every day now so you can join the Boogettes and the Boogie Bros. This is my Boogie Beehive. This is the Let Me Stress You Out show, live, where I wrote somebody on y'all behalf. So, Rashad, if somebody done something wrong to you, Nicole, if somebody done something wrong to you, you type it in the comments. Just tell me what they did disrespectful to you. And if, they, if it's a malicious intent, I'm going to roast them like nobody business. You don't have to tell me what they look like. Just tell me what they did of, with malicious intent to you. You know what, Autumn? I would like to give you Autumn. I would like to come to you today and uplift you as well. I like to I like to uplift you and tell you that every time they see your name on the application, they think you white, Autumn. Autumn, hey, it ain't too many black girls named Autumn. I don't know. Hey, let me tell you something. Autumn, ah, uh, we're looking for Autumn Collie. Where's Autumn Collie? Uh, uh, Autumn Collie. Looking for a white lady. That name came from the mountains of Secaucus, where you could see Caucasians. That's the that's a whole different side of the of the planet from Mount Negrosis. On the other side, they got the Secaucus Mountains where you could see Caucasians. Autumn, your name came from a white person. Somebody was white. One of your parents. Your mama or your daddy was influenced by the white culture. They picked your name from the mountains of Secaucus, so people could think you was Caucasian. I don't want to know why they done that to you, baby, because you too cool for that. But hey, Autumn, thank you for accepting your trophy for Caucasian name of the day so, so gracefully. So, thank you for coming, baby. I, I miss you. Every time I see you, I'll be happy to see you. I'll be happy to see your name come in the chat, Pam Brown. Pam uh, Brown, Brown Martin, Pamela Brown Martin. Let me tell you, let me uplift you right fast before we get the meet and greet portion over the show. Uh, Pam Brown Martin, there ain't gonna be no more damn Pam. Pamela is the, you the last of the Pamelas, okay? You gonna get the senior citizen name of the day. I don't care how old you are. Your name was passed down from a long line of Pam. You the last damn Pamela coming along. There ain't gonna be no baby Pamela in 2022. Oh, look at the baby Pamela. Oh, who named their baby uh, Pamela in 2022? Which one of y'all picked this out? Which, who, who, why y'all name this, this baby after y'all great, after her great auntie like this? Well, Pam, you the last of the damn Pams. You got the senior citizen name of the day. We must uplift you because you our last group of friends named Pam. We about to be having Blue Ivies in St. West and, and names like that. Yeah, ain't nobody going to be named next, no damn Pamela right next to them. Damn sure ain't going to be no Pamela Brown Martin. Hell no. You the last of them, them, them last of them names got made in what, 1985? Uh, not, no, not 90. I'm going to go farther back. I'm going to say about 1978. 78 was the last of the Pam because of Pam Grill. Lord L said a heifer drove 200 miles to lift my spirits on Easter, but ended up using my lights and water and laundry supplies to do our laundry at my house. Now, Lloyd L., I, that ain't no good stress out right there, because that lady ain't did nothing wrong to you. She came, saw your regular ass on Easter. She ain't have to come now, but she came, even though she had to wash clothes 
Even though she had to unfold up her clothes and, and, you know, bring her chair over there so you can babysit. That's still the way that you, that's not, that's not nobody doing something with malicious intent wrong to you. You got money, you can pay that damn water bill. You got, you, you been paying that highlight bill. You can keep paying it, Lord L. It ain't gonna kill you. Share the live, Lord L. Share the live with the lady who came over to your house on Easter. You want her stressed out because she you used your laundry supplies to do her laundry at your house. Ain't, that ain't no malicious intent right there. That's not nothing to stress nobody out over. That's not a good roast. I'm not gonna roast nobody for doing that shit. They got to do what they gotta do, shit. Hey, you the only one in the family water washer and dryer, shit. What you want people to do if they don't come to, try to come over to your house to wash? That's what they supposed to do. I don't care who it is. You got them right, uh, Amy Ross. Amy, Amy Ross from, with the sauce from New Orleans. Everybody wash on Sundays. They let, yo, you just happen to have your little get together on Easter Sunday at, at your house, and goddamn, of course I need to wash. Well, and I ain't got no more washer powder. But listen, they was I, I ran out of I ran out of my little game, and I use your little tide. So I mean, hey, you you have a ample tide in here. Don't be selfish like that. Let it go, and uh, Lord, L. that's how you get your blessings, baby. Your blessings rain down upon you if you don't take uh, hostility towards somebody with little more resources than you. With little less resources than you. That's malicious, LOL, if you let her come over and don't... <laughs> right. If Oh, that is, but that'll be wrong of you. I would have to stress you out if you invited somebody over to your house and told them, don't touch none of my shit. You're over here to sit down and, and have a little dinner. And you eat this goddamn dinner and you don't touch a motherfucker. You don't put your hand on the fork till I say so. I'll gross your ass and say, your old selfish ass don't need to have nobody at your house. You need to eat at your house by your goddamn self if you feel that way. Don't have no summer get together if you don't want nobody to come over there and use your damn uh, washing facilities and your washing power. Vice President want me to remind y'all to get y'all verb energy bars like my good, good, good. Like my good home girl Hope Harmony did. She ordered her verb energy bars and guess what? Hope be in that goddamn gym. Look at Hope Harmony in the comments. Hope Harmony the one who said that's malicious and LOL. She the one who be in that goddamn gym doing them squats, doing them booty tighteners, getting that butt tight. She be in there eating her verb energy bars, eating her healthy broccoli and shit. Oh, she trying to get that body right so she can come to the goddamn Let Me Stress You Out show and be amongst friends and be amongst equals, people who are trying to do better in life, people who are getting that body together. Because guess who Hope Harmony look like, y'all, when y'all go to her page? Y'all going to say she look like a J-I-L-L-S-C-O-T-T. Y'all y'all know who that is. That's exactly who Hope Harmony look like. She look like a red she ready to be in a Tyler Perry movie. And she on a sea moss. Ooh, and she drinking plenty of water. Oh, goddamn Hope Harmony is one of the baguettes, baby. That's how we roll. We try to get our shit together on social media and we ain't gonna talk about nobody unless they deserve it or they going against our betterment. What up, Cat Lee, baby? I'm glad you came. Miss Miss Nett Simmons, I'm so glad you ordered your, your your little merchandise, baby. Your merchandise is on its way. Thank you so much for ordering your Let Me Stress You Out t-shirt. I appreciate you, ladies. All y'all, if y'all got a little extra income, some of y'all ain't got it. Well, I don't, hey, I'm trying to help you get there. If you follow Boogie B, I'll help you get to the money now. You just got to get the right mentality and the right mind state. You get to the money. I'll come here every day. It's going to be a motivational seminar for you to get your shit together. Eat air and hope eating them avocados. Hope you doing everything I tell you to do, baby. Guess what? That stomach going to come off you. And guess what's going to happen? That coochie going to be sloppy juicy. And guess what? You going to end up with a husband and love you and want to and wanna make more babies with you, with your two little girls. You gonna get a husband that love you, and he gonna and he gonna be a good God fearing man because you done got that coochie right and you done got that mentality right by coming to the Let Me Stress You Out show. And I got you, baby. Just follow Boogie B. I promise you, I can lead you to the promised land if you're a woman. Easy. And if you're a man, cause guess what, Boogie B. Ain't never had no problem getting no woman. Now I don't care money or no money. 
Yeah, I'm handsome and charming. I need, I, I don't, listen, I'm a good nigga. I ain't gonna cheat on you, beat on you. And I'm gonna put green apples, Jolly Ranchers, Nick Nick on you. And I'm making my own money. Come on now. I ain't never had no problem leading my fellas to the promised land. Come to the, tag one of them niggas who need to get to the promised land. Come on now, some of these niggas, they ain't shit. Oh, all of them, some of them, they gonna, you gonna run across the promise. Let me tell you something, son. Y'all gonna go through some shit. I need y'all to identify with each other. That's why I need y'all to come to the Let Me Stress You Out so you can see each other and see that the Purple Pack exists in multiple forms. They don't even know what the Purple Pack is. Lord L, go to my website, baby. It's in my, it's, the link is in my bio. You can go there after we finish. But let me tell y'all this, ladies and gentlemen. The Let Me Stress You Out show is about a roast. If, if somebody come up that deserves a roasting, I give it to them. Sight unseen. I don't need no name. I don't need no description. Tell me what they did and I'm on their ass. Second off, the tour is coming. I'm, the tour is coming. I'm in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. May the 21st uh, and 22nd or something like that. 21st and 22nd, I'm going to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And um, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. So, yes. Tour, tour dates are being added all the time. Janine Rowell, you know, I'm waiting on the COVID to let up. I'm waiting on all y'all to get y'all shots. I ain't getting no shots. I'm on CMOS. I'm good. I done made it this whole pandemic doing comedy shows and everything, and I ain't got no coronavirus. And guess what? And I just took me a coronavirus test yesterday. And now I still ain't got coronavirus because I'm on CMOS. I don't need, <laughs> no, some of y'all got health problems, some of y'all overweight, some of y'all getting up in age, some of y'all need to take your little vaccine shot, but some of y'all is healthy and some of y'all doing the right things with your body, so you ain't got to worry too much about a coronavirus, I promise you that. Purple Pack is, they all know what Purple Pack is, I'm sorry, I'm getting all off track, you got your first shot yesterday, good Janine Rowell. I'm glad you got your little shot, baby. Get it in you. If it helps, I hope it helps you, and I hope it prevents you from doing that thing. But get on that CMOS now that you done got this shot now. That CMOS going to have to combat whatever they putting in your body. The CMOS got to replenish the minerals that they put from the chemicals that they putting in your body. You got yours last week? Good, can y'all call a purple pack? Lord, they don't know what purple pack is, y'all. Put the little purple hearts in for Lord, they don't. You don't know what Purple Pack is, that is the coochie that is next level. Let me tell you why. I, re I refer to, I call high level coochie Purple Pack. Why? Because if, you, if you're thinking of, about a high level of coochie, you can, it could easily be compared to when the Red Pack of Skittles came out. Delicious, the best flavorful thing that you ever tasted in your life. Let me show you. You, re you remember these right here? Do you remember these? You don't. You haven't eaten one in a while because we grown and we don't eat all that candy. But when you first tasted this with the kids, this was the best thing you ever tasted. Mm -hmm. You ate them for a long time. They were since in a pack. Later down the line, as you matured in eating your red pack of Skittles, and you probably started branching off eating other kind of candy, something dropped after that called the Purple Pack. I call it the Purple Pack, but it was really known as... Wow, berry Skittles. Wow, berry Coochie. Ooh, Purple Pack. Oh, my God. It changes lives. When you first tasted this, when you first saw it, you knew it was different, but you didn't know how. You was like, damn, that looked good. Damn, that wasn't if that, how that taste. That probably be good like a regular skin. Let me taste one of these. You buy one of these packs, and you start eating it, and you go back in the store and get another pack. Like, mm. you know what? I'm about to double back in and grab another pack of these because I, I, I'm going to fuck this pack up. I'm going to get another pack. I'm going to double back on this. The double pack. Purple pack will make you double back. Lord L, if you ain't never had no coochie or had a coochie on your body, when somebody came back to get it for seconds after you told them or they told you that you couldn't have it no more, they told you, you told them, you can't have it no more. Five years, two years, ten years, one year. Two months later, they come back with their hand out. <laughs> I sure would love some of that, of that Gucci that you gave me last time, Lloyd L. And you be like, God damn, why? I ain't think I got a whole family now. 
Why are you just coming back for the Oh, the purple pack made you double back. Wow. Woo. I done had the purple pack for a minute. I didn't even know it. I know you didn't know it because ain't nobody told you like this. Boogie B gonna tell you. Anyway, this show is it, it, it's about interest interest and perspective. If you can think of your if you if this purple pack analogy does not apply to you and you a woman, it's okay. You can have red pack. It's totally okay. That's the red pack is delicious. I love it. It's just more common. It's everywhere. Purple pack, I gotta go to about five stores to find this. I couldn't find this at the Dollar Tree, hell no. I had to go all I had to go to a store in the a grocery store in the good neighborhood to get purple pack. That's the kind of pack I want around me at all times. Cause you don't even gotta eat purple pack. You can just smell it. Oh my god, it smells like Ooh, it, oh my god, it smells like every delicious flavor Kool-Aid you ever had in your life. Ooh, it smells like a damn ice or it smell like a frozen cup, a hucker buck, a, a what you call it, a cold cup, a freeze cup. It called it. You don't have to eat it and sample it yourself. You can just smell it and it makes you feel better. It gives off a good energy and a good aura and uh, make good comments in the chat and they funny and they charming and they. Purple pack is magnificent, but you got to go out for you walk. You ain't gonna just jump to be purple pack shit. You got to get that red pack into your career, get together, until your money get right, into your, you know, until you take care of household. You know, you got to do stuff to attain purple pack status. That's the only ones I like around me. I don't know. Anyways, somebody inboxed me some important shit, and we need to give that same type of perspective coming from the Boogie B.I. Gabriel, what's happening? Oh my God, I hate a grown ass cussing kids. Okay, I hate a grown ass cussing kids. Okay, I think I know what you're saying, uh, Cabria, but that just brings me to, you got to come here every day, let us verify, Lord L, I need to see you all day. Every day you can come, we need your mentality. Mentality makes you purple pack. If you think purple pack, so, so shall you be. Hold up, Kaferia. I think I know what you're talking about because one of my boogie bros said he started messing with this girl, right? He was fucking with her and they, they ready to take it to the next level. She wanted him, or he wanted, to meet. they agreed to meet her children. Now, she fucked with him, now, Lord L. She done gave him the coochie. He's a, she a good, look, you know, he thinks she good girl. He like, damn, I found me one. I'm okay, cool, I'll meet your kids. Now, she got kids, and he don't mind, because he got money. He ain't tripping off no of her having kids, right? So he go over there, he's you know, good brother. This one of my baguettes. I only fuck with the real. You know, I only fuck with good brothers. You know what I mean? They, they make bad decisions sometimes, but they're still good brothers. My bro, my broken bro came over there, moneyed up. He ain't worried about it. She got three kids, so what? He got three, she got three kids, and guess what? They all ages. One of them, like, 12, one of them, like, Nine, one of them like four or five or something like that. She got all levels of ages. And he went over there. And they, they, they got feelings for each other, so they were ready to take to the next level. And Cabria, guess what he heard? He heard her cuss them children out like grown-ass men. She cussed them. She, cussed, she was... Listen, Cabria, this how she this how she do her kids, though. But And he don't know how to feel about it. But he like, damn, I don't know, damn, I don't know if I agree with her parenting skills. Like, I don't know what, because Tiffany Niffy, she one of them mamas that be like, sit the fuck down, bitch, before I get that motherfucking belt and bust you in your head with it, motherfucker, sit down. That's how she talk to her kids, 12, <laughs> 9, <laughs> and 6, <laughs> uh, 12, 9, and 6, baby. Oh my God! When he told me I should be talking to him, I bust out laughing. You know me, Teresa Davis. You know me. I'm gonna laugh when I hear what he said. Cause I said, "Well, what did she say to the kids? Why you think she cussed at the kids like that?" He said, "Well, she said the kids were jumping around in the back. You know, I met them. They were some sweet kids. You know, I you know we were talking. We you know we ate and everything and everything. But then we're good." 
The kid went to bed. She said, go the fuck to bed. She said, get y'all asses in that motherfucking bed now. And he was like. She could have waited until after he left. Damn. <laughs> Marie said she could have at least waited until the man left before he started cussing you. <laughs> Cabrera said sometimes the little motherfuckers be needing that shit. They don't react to nothing but violence. <laughs> I got some hood ass kids. <laughs> you damn right you got some hood ass kids with a name like Cabrera. You damn right Cabrera. You got some hood kids. But the only way... It just, I mean, the only way they understand is violence. Okay, I can understand your perspective. I can understand that. But my boogie pro want to know what he should do. You will just be ignored. You should start a good brother's dating service. Ha! <laughs> no, no, Lodell. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be responsible for that. I'll help them if they need help, but shit, everybody fuck up. <laughs> I ain't gonna hold them too much responsible for some of the mistakes that y'all will hold them responsible for. I don't like parents that cuss at their kids, especially calling them out of their names. A lot of people don't. I can see your point on that too. Kids react to violence, Vice President said, when that's all they've seen. Wow, see, you now y'all know Vice President Michelle Nelson, she had that, you know, she used to be a pastor, you know, she used to preach the word of God, you know what I'm saying, so she was, she, and, you know, they got to go through the therapy session training and shit for y'all, for to get their theologian license, for their theologist license, you see what I'm saying, they got to get that, so they know how to speak to you from a, from a psychologist perspective, is that's probably what that is, because she says, that kids react to violence when that's all they see. That sounds like, yeah, psychology. I'm hood to the max. My mom never did that to her bastard chaps, to her four bastard chaps. Okay, well, some mamas did, but you know, I, you know, I done. My auntie was definitely like that. My auntie Lisa, boy, woo. My auntie Lisa, cuss your ass to, from call you everything but a child of God. I remember one time my, my Auntie Lisa, we was in the kitchen and we was getting extra Capri Suns out, Capri Sun pouches out of the bottom thing. She heard the bottom slang slide off. She said, don't y'all get no motherfucking another Capri Sun before I come in there and bust y'all in y'all motherfucking head. I was like, Auntie Auntie Lisa crazy. Auntie Lisa talked to everybody like that. She didn't give a damn. No, not true. My children are day and night. Hope and faith, y'all children probably, well, faith probably don't got no children. But hope, y'all children probably was, you know, y'all parents ain't do that, so you ain't do that. Lake Shea Renee said, that's a pet peeve number nine for me. It hurts my soul to hear parents to say all that to their children and then get mad when the kids give it back to them. Hey, ain't nothing more hypocritical than a parent now. <clears throat> because I don't curse, scream, or yell, one, one don't listen to me. I always got to call her dad. Well, now, you know, that's your parenting tactics, and that's all fine and dandy as well. Everybody is entitled to their own form of parenting. We're not here to judge nobody damn parenting because you do what you do for your kids as your kid. But now, how it's responded to by the opposite sex or by a man is what we are talking about today. So what we're talking about today is not whether or not she should cuss at her kids because she already did. But my boogie bro want to know what to, say, what to think about this beautiful sweet lady that he had been dating for the last two months. And he wants to take it to the next level. And she does that in front of him. What should she, what should, what, what's going on with him? Like what's, it's a pet peeve to a lot of people. I get it. When you disrespect your kids by looking for comfort in others. Oh, when you disrespect your kids, they go looking for comfort in others. Okay. I, don't, I ain't sure what that really got to do with it.
My kids know if I call your full name, you, you know you messed up. Janine, your damn name Janine. Now, shit, you got a white name. Ain't no need for you to be cussing those damn kids out. White people be so disappointed that they allowed you to have their white name. She won't thank him for it. What you say? He should have a talk with her. Oh, Danielle D says she won't. Danielle with the D from the UK says she ain't gonna thank him. But Marie said she should have a talk. He should have a talk with her. He don't have kids without Anastasia. No, he does not have kids with a young lady. He just was ready to take it to the next level. She was feeling him. He was feeling her. They feel like they was going towards a. A, 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 a happy relationship. He wanted to meet our kids. She brought him over. She, you know, she wanted him to meet the kids and everything. She brought him over. They had a good time. At the end of the night, she cussed the kids out like they was goddamn. She cussed them out like they was at a like at a Compton dice game. Boogie Bro, if she do it to her kids, she'll do it to yours. Make the decision. Woo! That's woo, damn. Okay, uh, Lawanda Wood Griffin. That's what. That's a good way to stand on your own two man shit. Talk your shit. I ain't gonna be mad at you, uh, uh, Lawanda Wood Griffin. I ain't never tricked you. You said if she'll do it to the kids, she if she'll do it to her kids, she'll do it to yours. You make the decision. Now, this kind of brings me to this kind of brings me to a good point there. Uh, because now is the time for the show that I like to refer to as the WWBBD portion of the show. This What Will Boogie B Do? And I'm going to tell you why, and, and I'm going to tell you why I say what I say when I tell you what I'm going to do. Because it does make very much good sense that to my boogie bro, if she do it to her kids, she'll do it to your kids. Now, a boogie bro like me ain't trying to have no more kids. So I wouldn't even be concerned with that. You know what I mean? I don't even like women who could still get pregnant. I like that sake cycle. Like, I like you to be the got something done to something. I don't even want to deal with all that no more. At my, at my age, at my particular time in life. I got I got church. I'm good on you. Now, so when you say if if that makes that does make a difference if you have kids or you plan on having kids with her, she will do it to your kids if she do it to her kids. Now, here's the thing with that. It goes farther than that because if she will do it to her children, whom she loves, whom she squirted out of her uh, vagina, uh, 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 whom she produced from her DNA, you think you don't think she gonna talk to you crazy a little bit? If y'all get in a relationship, you got them. You better not be able to get pregnant no more, Cabria, because I ain't, I don't even do that no more. I'm grown. I don't believe nothing. I don't take no chances on nothing. Snip, tied, burnt, uh, twisted, stepped on. Listen, I need something. Don't tell me to go get my procedure done. I can't afford it. So look, listen, I ain't, listen, I'm an innovation. I can't afford to get no dingling snipped off at this age. I don't know what's going to happen. How long I got this thing I don't want to mess with it now. It's too late. So if you done had children or you didn't have children, you got, hey, listen, if you want Boogie B, look. Hey, no, 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 no. I, listen, it, nah, nah, I don't agree with everything I can't stand you say. But I do agree that high value men don't want to start no family with somebody who already got a bunch of damn children. I got too much. Hey, listen, I'm, if I'm high value and I done raised mine or I done got my own and I, I'm taking care of mine, I don't want to come in there's no, there's no high value nigga and bust no nut, nut, nut no another one off up in you. I'm, I don't mind if you got yours. As long as you got yours under control. But I'm definitely not coming in there to start a new family with you. Now, I could get a chick who ain't got no kids for that. I'm coming in here for them damn things that be tire clipped and burnt, baby. Or at least uh, know how to handle your birth control. 
It may be a little early to be meeting the kids. Too much? No, I don't feel like that's too early, Janine Rowell. They've been dating very consistently. She done already gave up the coochie. They done already been enjoying each other's company, going on dates and trips. He just never, she never brought him around the girl. She feels like he's a good guy. He feels like she's a good woman. He wants to meet her kids. That's how shit's supposed to go. You can't be mad at that part, Janine Rowell. Hey, let me tell you something. Got damn right, female flipping in their tricks. I bet I listen. I'd rather date a woman who, who a sexy 69 than date a beautiful 30 year old who trying to make some more damn pop up some babies on me and gonna be cheating on me and shit. Hell no. These young old, yep, excuse me, excuse my language. These young girls be still hoeing out here. They might be, make a baby with you, but they still gonna cheat on you now. They gonna meet uncheated on you. If they in their early 20s, early 30s, I don't care how old you is. They gonna, them young girls gonna cheat on your ass. Baby or no baby, they gonna pop that pussy for a poke chop at some time in your relationship. Why? Because that dingle ain't gonna start to slide on the decline the older you get. You done scoop your, never mind, I don't know how I even got on that subject. It's good to meet people, kids, show their colors around their kids. What should you do if if they do show their colors around their kids like that, in the nature to where it's, yes, a lot of y'all got them tools tied up. My kind of crowd, hell yeah. Who said my two tools? Lake Shaver, Nate, Vice President said them tools is tied and clipped and burnt. No, woo! Oh, oh, the, oh, oh, who that was said that? Oh, that was Lake Shaver, Nate. Said it was coochie was tied, and, uh, uh, and Cabrilla too. Woo, this is my kind of crowd. Some of y'all good. Don't do us like that. We all don't cheat. Yes, you do. At some point in your life, ladies, you're going to cheat. And if a nigga catch you too early in the game, too early in life, when you ain't popped that pussy properly yet, and you ain't got over that phase in your life, or you've been locked in with a family all this time, and you just busting out the money, you about to cheat on somebody. You you ain't ready to just be jumping into no relationship with no other dude and he all settled and got kids and finished with his shit and co 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 successful and handsome and on Seamoth, good career. That dingling gonna fall off at some point in your relationship and you gonna be hot to try because you ain't got it out your system. That's why. Now, let me tell you what this, about this cussing at your kids. Let me tell you about the kid cusser. I call her the kid cusser. She, she likes to scream and howl and cuss at the kids. Now, the, the reason why I don't personally, I wouldn't personally stand that around me for sure. For one thing, I'm a guest. Until I live in your house, I'm a guest. And you don't have the cooth enough or the class enough to not curse your children out around my presence is kind of disrespectful to me as a man. I feel like you're playing with me. You, you, I feel like you're trying to slick threaten me on the cool. Like you trying to slick let me know I cuss them out and nigga I cuss you out too. Oh no you're not. We're not going to be having no cussing battles because I'm growner than that. I ain't the type of nigga. I ain't about to be cussing you out. You ain't about to be cussing me out. Because I don't do that. I don't like that. If don't You don't cuss me, I won't cuss you, and we'll be fine. But the minute you tell me, get the fuck out, then all gloves off, you're getting cussed out. Now, you don't cuss me, and I don't cuss you. That's the type of rule that I set in place in my relationships. Because I don't like nobody cussing me because I'm temperamental. And if you cuss me too much, you're threatening me. And if you're threatening me too much, then I gotta defend myself. And if I gotta defend myself, there's no telling what's gonna happen from that point on. I got I got hood mentality. I don't wanna have to defend myself to no woman. I don't wanna have to defend me to you. No, no, no. You're supposed to love me now. You're not gonna be talking to me like that. Hell no. What will Boogie B do? I will stop her in mid sentence. Hey, hey, hey. Don't I let you turn like that. I know them your children. But listen, me and you together, I'm your man. Around me, I would like you not to do that. I would prefer that you don't cuss at children. First off, why are you cussing at them like they adults? Why are you cussing at them with such aggression and a, and such and such veracity? Why why do you feel the need? 
that you have not raised your children to the point where you can set them down like logical adults and say, hey, sit y'all behind down or say, hey, sit y'all selves down or whatever. Y'all six, eight and twelve. Y'all six, nine and twelve. Y'all ain't old enough for you for y'all to make me mad enough to be cussing at you like that. You have an anger management issue, I see. That's what that that's what that gives off to me if I'm at your house, Cabrera, and, and your kids start bumping and jumping in the room and me and you on the couch. And I'm and I'm about to play with your coochie or whatever, cause we in our little relationship. I'm ready to play with some coochie. And I get ready to play with that coochie and you holler out, sit the fuck down, you stinking hoes. I be like, whoa, whoa, wow. Woo! Um Don't do that. Please, I, if you can, don't do that around me. I will tell you that right then and there. But then guess what happens after that? Now, uh, now I'm very leery about moving forward in the relationship. Why? Because if you ever fix your lips to tell me, sit the fuck down, funky hoes, to, to, to me, then oh, we're going to have a serious problem. It's going to be a serious misunderstanding in the relationship. It ain't gonna be no, it's gonna be some furniture moving, but it's gonna be moving from in the house to out the house. We somebody moving out of the house with somebody. If you start talking to me like you talk to them children. So I wanna form the habit with you of not talking to people like that at all. Because if you accidentally do it to me, it, it's gonna be a tournament. What you think I you think I gotta deal with that with all the good dick I got? You think I'm putting all this good dick lean on you. And, and I could be putting this dick on anybody. Now, I got a, I got a decent career. I'm semi-handsome, semi-funny. Come on now, I could be putting this dick lean on anybody. You telling me that you not going to stop cussing people like that in front of me I, for my sake? Yeah, oh, so you just going to go find you a better nigga. That's what you going to do. How many good niggas you think you allotted in your life? How many good niggas do you think gonna come your way after you squander the one that you got because you can't watch your goddamn mouth? Fellas, if she can't watch her mouth talking to her kids and she can't watch her mouth because you ask her to and be a little more ladylike because you ask her to, you don't want that. You don't want them problems. You don't want them problems because she gonna cuss you. And guess what? If she'll cuss you and get that serious with you, she'll bust you in your damn head with something. Now, Cabrilla might still be, un she said the kids don't understand nothing but violence. That's what she said. That's why she can talk to them like that. But let me tell you something, uh, Cabrilla. Violence ain't always the answer, when you, especially when you're talking about your kids or your relationship. So you have to find the alternate method besides violence, verbally, verbal violence or physical violence. You want to slap the fuck out somebody, but you don't because you try to find, because you're an adult and you know how to find another way to express yourself. Now, as a man, I'm only going to deal with a woman who knows how to express herself in a way of non-violence. Because if you put your hands on me, then who knows what's going to happen? I don't know. Shit, don't nobody never put their hands on me, so I really don't tell you. I really can't tell you what happened. But I know it won't be a, a good, pleasant situation. I know it's going to turn out bad for both of us because we're going to lose each other out of each other's lives. You, you, I ain't going to be in your life. You're going to be talking to me like that. So. What happens when they met with people in the streets angrier than them? Yeah, that's another thing. Gail Carter. She verbally abusing them kids. You're going to verbally abuse me, I feel like. So I don't want you to do it around me early, especially not. Because the first time I come to your house, that's not the representation that I want of you and your children's relationship. That's off the dribble, baby. Come on now. I, the doors of the church are open. Why I got to keep preaching to y'all like this to kind of straighten this thing out of y'all mind? Dollar sign Boogie BLLC. Hit the cash app. Or, or go ahead to my website and order something. Or order these verb energy bars. There's multiple ways to support me. To make sure I'm here every day. Or depending on your budget. If you got a hit the cash out budget, then you hit the cash out. If you got a verb energy bar uh, 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 budget, then you hit the link in my bio. See, that's cheap. That ain't nothing but 
that ain't number 12, 12 or something dollars. That's easy. Some of y'all got a verb energy bar, uh, budget. If you got a damn t-shirt budget, you can copy your t-shirt. Ain't number $20. If you got a $20 budget, you can do that. It's all kind of things you can do to sow your seed. Give me what they like to call my doopy benevolence for giving y'all the true point of view from, from a man on some, just not on some sexist shit, not on some woman ain't shit, but on some respect from me to you shit. I don't never try to tell y'all that things are equal between male and female because they are not. We know that men and women handle things differently, they think differently, they treat things differently. So I speak from both sides of the coin. I'll tell you uh, 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 from the woman's perspective as well. If you saw me cuss my children out, you should be looking at me some type of way. If you came to my house for the first time, we, you know, we done hooked up, been hooked up for two, two months, I'll let you come meet my little daughter and son or whatever, and you come over there, and we, me and you having a good time. We done had a good night with the kids. The kids go in the room and start jumping up and down. And you see Boogie B stand up and be like, Hey, y'all sit the fuck down in there before I come in there and fuck y'all up. Both of y'all sit the fuck down. Stupid ass. So anyway, baby. You know what? I just want to be with you. I want to be your man. I want to be your lover. I want to be your sister, your auntie, your mommy, your papi. But you gotta believe in me, baby. You gotta believe that everything that I do is what's best for us, baby. Come on now, how you gonna believe what this nigga saying? He ain't no smooth ass Mac if he cussing them children out like that. Thank you. I want you to put I want to put the other shoe on the other foot so you know how it feels for us. And we, but men don't do that, you know, it's a very rare. Very rare occasions that men talk to their children like that, but hey, it's, 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 the, or the, the woman would see a man talk to his children like that. Speak life in your, into your children. It's super hard out there in these streets. We gotta love us, especially the biotic, bi, biopic, black, ingenious people of color. Okay, and the Lord coming in here on your soul, sister number one. You must be my soul, shit. So sister You gonna have to walk around with a sister but if your mouth is You gonna have to walk around with a sister <laughs> with a sister button. This is my mouth. If your ass don't like it, kiss my ass. I understand that, but if you want a man, if you wanna be in a relationship, and you get in a relationship where your mouth is not sister or with no regard for the fact that those are minor children and the fact that this is your man whom you should respect. It's not about censoring your it's not about censoring your speech. It's about the respect that you give to those around you. And people who wanna love you, they wanna love you based off the fact that you give respect to everyone around you. Whether they whether they uh 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 whether you feel as though they deserve it or not, you have more self-control over that than cuss out your children. Now, cussing out me is one thing, but cussing out your children, I already know you're going to cuss me to the point you're going to call my mama a hoe. You, you don't have no control over your mouth. You're going to be like, fuck you and your whole ass mama, bitch, and I'm going to pull a pistol out. And I ain't gonna pour it, and I ain't gonna do, I might put it back right back up, but it'll be a second nature when somebody say something like that if they put my hand on my strap. Cause I ain't gonna allow it, but if you don't have the control, the self control with your kids, what about when I really fuck up in the relationship? You think that just because I fucked up, you gonna chastise me to the point where you can cuss unrelentlessly at a person that they, and they still love you? And y'all still have a healthy relationship? Come on now, this shit getting out of hand. Some of y'all ain't even really trying in life no more. Some of y'all ain't trying. I need you to get on the side of right, baby. You ain't gonna get into heaven with them horrible attitudes. You not going to get into heaven talking to your children like they some dog ass, uh, like they some dog ass niggas on the street. Especially.
especially in front of a man who would like to be respected or a woman who also would like to be respected. Fellas, you can't cuss your kids out with a woman right there that you just met and you just finished putting dingling on. Where does that make Who does that make sense to in here? I see the hundreds in the chat meaning that I'm speaking all facts. But somebody in here totally disagrees with what I'm saying. Somebody in these comments. I don't know who it is. But somebody in these comments saying, Well, Boogie, this don't make no sense. What you mean I got to watch my mouth with my motherfucking kids? These my kids. I talk to these bitches the way I want to talk to them. Fuck what you or anybody got to say about what the fuck I do with my motherfucking children. Now y'all get y'all shit. Get y'all, get that backpack and come on. Get that goddamn backpack and come on fuck, fuck one of y'all up. This nigga Boogie B in here telling me I can't cuss at y'all. Get y'all asses on and get, and get in this motherfucking car. And you too. Pick that, stop it. Pick that shit up right now. Stop all that motherfucking crying, ho. Stop that crying before I come over there and pop you in your goddamn mouth. Get your shit. I don't give a fuck if you four years old. Get up and get your shit and get out of here. I don't want you doing that around me. Oh, my God. It makes me sick to my stomach. I don't want to hear all that profanity in one, I don't, coming out of one woman. Unless it's an extreme circumstance. Ooh, why do I want? If I ain't putting dingling in you right at that particular moment. <laughs> If, the, if I ain't putting dealing in you at that particular moment where you cussing, I don't want to hear all that cussing. I'm a grown man, baby. I know how to cuss. And I know you know how to cuss. But you should say if them cussing still when need be to somebody that done something with malicious intent to you, not no damn children. Oh, my God. Woo! Come on, Miss Nat. Come on, baby. You fucking your kid's self-esteem up. This is not just a, it's just not, it's not a, it's not just a bad deal for the kids. It's a bad deal for the man too if he's not my kid. And I'm not planning to have kids with you. It's still a bad deal for me to see you cuss your children out. Why? Because you gonna cuss me out like that. You, even though you love me, even though I done did right by you for five or ten years, when you get mad at me and how you get mad at them children, when you love me like almost to the, you never love a man like you love your children. Let's say that. That's just that's two different levels of love. You would die for them, right? If you would die for somebody and you would call them a stinky, low-down, dog asshole, then, then, then what you going to call me? When you get mad at me, even though I fucked up. Okay, guess what? Yes, people fuck up. Okay, Lord L, ain't nobody perfect. Shit, I ain't never saying nobody in this chat was perfect. I said we all trying. I was doing the best we could do. Now, nobody ain't going to be perfect and never do nothing wrong to upset you. But when they do, are you going to lose it and call them a low-down, stanky, funky, fat, trifling, cheesy, greasy, a uh, pussy eating, ass licking, punk dick, little dick having, whole ass mama having, faggot ass nigga. Is you gonna do that? I wish the fuck you would. Cause now you're roasting me. Now I'm gonna have to roast you back. And I don't wanna roast you cause I love you. I ain't gonna roast you. I, I don't want to. But you're pushing me into a corner talking to me like this. Just because I fucked up, that's what you. Okay. Alright. Let me get out of here. I got to go over to IG. Somebody else need to hear this information. I'm about to go tell them who coming with me over to IG. It's at Comedian Boogie B. Hit that cash app. I'm about to take a 10-minute break. Y'all hit that cash app on this little break period so I can shout y'all out and give y'all your old school dance on Instagram for everybody who hit that cash app. Lord L, start you up an Instagram account if you don't have one. Thank you, Janine. I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much, Lake Shay Renee. Your cheeks are good, baby. I'm glad I can do that through the internet for you. Amy Ross with the sauce. I'm so glad you're here, baby. I'm going to see you on IG, baby. My double dips. Y'all know where we at. We going over there. We going over there to holler at man to man and woman to woman. Let's go. Woman to woman.